There is so much more to Indonesia than just Bali. I mean, just look at this. And it's even raining. <laughs> Jogjakarta, also known as Joja, is the cultural hub of Java, Indonesia. A land of horse carriages, trishas, or bachaks as they call them here. It's a predominantly Islamic city, but also happens to house the largest Buddhist temple in the world. And it's a place we, and most likely you, have never heard of. I think we're about to race. This is what it looks like. That is, until right now. So we're flying to Kulam Progo, which is this chunk of land next to Yog... Jo... 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 We're heading to central Java today, going to Jogjakarta. Even though Java doesn't get as much attention as its neighboring Bali, it's actually one of the most populated islands in the entire world. Our grab driver told us that there are over 17,500 islands that make up Indonesia. And most people, including us, just go to the one. Hello. Thank you. This is beautiful, massive, and modern, and totally empty. We made it to Georgia and you know it's a little bit hard to tell what places are like in the rain or at night. Our hotel is really nice and the people here are super friendly. Yeah, I hope the rain goes away because I'm excited to explore this place. Okay, day two here in Yogyakarta. Yogyakarta, I'm still saying it wrong. I'm still saying it wrong. It really feels hard to describe just how big this city is. We're just in the Malioboro area, which is kind of the nicer touristy shopping centers. Really interesting mixture of these types of stores that are all over the place that are selling stuff for a dollar or two dollars. And then right across the street over there is one of the fanciest shopping malls in all of Georgia. And then we're seeing people go by on horseback right next to about a thousand scooters every minute. Now the one thing that we definitely haven't seen any of as far as we can tell, is any other tourists. There's a lot of people working in the shops, there's a lot of people going to work on their motorbikes, but what there isn't any, is anybody just kind of meandering around taking pictures like we are. This is a cool place to be. We gotta ride one of those things eventually. Just gotta. So admittedly, when we got in last night, in the rain, all the way from Abud, we were all feeling a little bit weary and nervous. And anytime you go to a new city or a new place that just feels wildly different than the place that you were just at, it's a shift and it's a change. And one that I think I tried to prepare for and I tried to prepare everybody for, but you just can't really prepare for the feeling that you're gonna have when you arrive. Joja is the last remaining Indonesian city ruled by a monarchy. So to try to get a better understanding of that, we headed straight to the source, the Sultan's Palace. Here we met our tour guide, who is actually a full-time palace musician, but part-time tour guiding during the month of Ramadan. On display this month are some of Joja's more fancy rides, the still-in-use royal carriages that are used for every major event at the palace. The ladies' carriages have no roof so they can be seen. We learned so many fascinating things about Joja's history as a cultural and educational hub of Indonesia. But the thing that stood out the most to us at the time was an offhand comment that was not about the palace, not about the history, not even about the historic carriages. It was one simple statement. Many people think Bali is its own country, that it is not Indonesia. There is so much more to Indonesia than Bali alone. That one stuck with us. With just our limited time here, we started to realize just how little we actually knew about the country that we were traveling through. 
Thousands of years of history, including struggles for independence, over 17,000 other islands with over 700 languages and dialects, 270 million people and counting, home to 400 volcanoes, and yet, for most of our lives, the only thing we had known about Indonesia was this. Oh, that was such a great tour. We learned so much, so much in there. At our next stop, Joja's Heritage Museum, we met a friendly, welcoming Dalang, or puppet master. It's the goddess of rice. Wow. Oh, goddess of rice. Yeah, she, oh, so she, she, it, yeah. she pick up. Yeah, oh. she As he showed us all the puppets he handcrafted and typically uses in the traditional Javanese Wayang performances, he explained that it has been over two years since he's been able to give a performance. Mm -hmm. wow. Still, he is as passionate as ever at his craft. As we were leaving, he walked us out and asked us where we had been traveling while in Indonesia. We told him we had just come from Ubud in Bali. He nodded, almost to say, ah yes, of course. After a full day of exploring and lots on our minds, we headed to our favorite meeting ground, that is the mall food court for dinner. I mean, I'd be lying if I said I wasn't interested. You're looking at probably like two to three dollars max per dish at one of these food courts and invariably the food is always incredible and there's so much variety. So the food courts basically work on the honor system here. You order all your food, you go and sit down, you eat it. And then before you leave, you pay the cashier on the way back out. It's a really nice way to do it. It's really efficient too. I, I think, I feel like we're all getting to a point where we're more comfortable and and getting to know the area and, and feeling good about our decision to come here. Tonight, apparently Maria Boro Street is going to be completely closed off to traffic except for pedestrians. So we're gonna go explore and see what the night brings us. As we walked around Mario Boro, we wondered where everybody was. We just saw this massive line of people <laughs> up there, and they're all waiting for a haunted house. It's 5.30 and um, now we get into a car with someone we don't know for an hour to a temple that, oh, I don't know, we may or may not be able to see. This is Mr. Gunawan, our driver for the day, who was kindly recommended to us by one of you. It turns out we would be spending a lot of time together. Joja's most famous temples are really, really far away and actually aren't even in Joja. It also turns out that we were his first customers in over three years. In for three years? Yeah, wow. Wow. Corona yeah. stuck in 2019, yeah? yeah? Then we got to our first stop, the biggest Buddhist temple in the entire world. The place everybody told us we have to get up at sunrise to climb. The single most visited tourist spot in all of Indonesia. Borobudur. That was such a beautiful drive. Wow. Even with the weather, it is just stunning. The villages on the side, the bridges that we were going over, and then the villages on the side of the bridge because they were deep by the river, and then all the different mountains and, and all the different volcanoes. Gunaman is awesome too. All right, so we made it to Borobudur just a short one and a half hour drive later. It is empty here. We basically have this whole place to ourselves. There it is. Wow. Look at that thing. Amazing. Let's go check it out. Wow, the view from the top of the surrounding volcano. Whew. 
So I just talked to the guy over there and he said we can't go up due to COVID, I guess. No. It's a pretty big bummer. Because, you know, when you see on photos and when you when you hear about Bodo Budur and you see all the pictures and the videos, you see all the, like, amazing things from the stupa. We paid 25 bucks thinking, you know, we'd get to experience all of Bodo Budur, but you do get to walk around. So we traveled to Joja specifically to see to see Borobudur, to see this. It's awesome, we do get to see it, but because of COVID, I guess, you can't actually go, so normally you'd be able to go all the way up to the top, and, and I guess we'll show you some stock footage of exactly what that would look like, but it's closed. I think Lisa's taking it especially hard right now because this was her whole idea, her whole thing to come here and see this, and she's been excited for weeks. It is incredible though. They are actually letting some people up there, but it seems like only people on a maybe wedding photo shoot. I don't know, definitely not us. You try to follow the rules and you do all the research and you plan everything. You drag the whole family here and you hype it up. <laughs> so we just looked up the stock footage of this place that we have that we're probably gonna share with you guys on here. Uh, it makes us feel a little bit of what it will be like to go up there. There's a there's a huge market outside of Borobudur and it is massive and beautiful and it seems like it was once a hustling bustling place. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> the mood in the car on the way to the next temple was a little bit less than optimistic. Okay, we made it to Prambanan Temple. Very long drive. Probably two hours, I think, on the road. You excited about this one? Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to get you too excited, but I think we can get into this one. Yay! I'm itchy. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Wow, this... This is so beautiful. Apparently, this temple, Prambanan, is the largest Hindu temple in all of Indonesia, and it's the tallest. Taller than Borobudur, not that we're comparing, but we are. There's one large central temple, and then there's all these surrounding temples, and over 224 what they call protector temples. It's a huge complex, and it's beautiful. It's so peaceful, too. And we get to go off, yay! We can barely catch up to the parents, they're so excited. Let's go find them. I mean, the shape of it, the details and every little thing, all the little carvings, all the stones, the, just the scale of it. You just can't get a good grasp of it if you're looking at it from, I don't know, half a mile away. It's well worth the trip, just for this alone. Just the scale of it, how big it is, and you can tell that each stone has been carved by hand, and it's, it's just unimaginable how many people and how much time that took. They allow you to walk right up to the stones and take close-up pictures and examine everything closely. It's so peaceful. The clouds are nice and moody a little bit, and the rain is just barely drizzling. It adds to the majestic is that a word? It adds to the magic of this place, for sure. This place is so, so cool. So in case you guys are looking at going on the same tour, it's, you know, kind of expensive, but really not all that bad for what you get. So it starts super early in the morning, and usually this means like well before sunrise, like 3 or 4 a.m. is apparently the best time to be out at the first temple, Bodo Budur, once it's actually open, which I'm sure it'll be in a couple months. The ride out there from the town all the way out there takes like an hour and a half, and then once you get there, the ticket to get in is about $25 per person. And then if you're intending to also see Prom which is a temple that we're at right now. You can buy a combo ticket for both of them that'll save you about $10 per person. So it ends up being about 40 bucks per person.
I was feeling a little bit discouraged and admittedly a little bit entitled after our last temple experience, but I'm really, really glad we made it to Prambanan and get to experience all of this. Let's go. Come under. I don't know if it's the rain or just the fact that it's open. This place is amazing. It's a complex of all these different temples or kandis and wow, they're all super beautiful. I would definitely allot one to two hours here because it's massive and there's so many cool temples to see. And there are lots of cafes and places to eat and have a drink. We're now at Sewu Temple and it is raining and windy, but we are literally the only people here and it is so beautiful. Oh my gosh. I am so happy we came. I don't know how else to describe it, but it's a sight to see. Our last few moments in Joja made everything leading up to this point all so worth it. To say that getting to Jojo was an easy decision for us would be stretching the truth quite a bit. There were so many times we wanted to back out. I mean, just a few days earlier, we had to wander all throughout Ubud just to book our flight online and pay for them at a local convenience store. How do you even how do you, even how do, you do pay it? at an awesome mart? You don't go to 7-Eleven and be like, you guys are travel agents. I need your expertise. But we get a lot of other things at 7-Eleven. <laughs> And for some reason, our names didn't even make it onto the reservation, so we spent an hour in an alleyway talking to the airline to confirm our flights. And then after all of that, we had to rebook the flights online. We then arrived at a beautiful, immaculate, but completely empty airport, and were immediately met with thunder and rain. Right. That was the loudest thunder I've ever heard. Woo! Hello! Oh, oh baby! <laughs> Sorry, we're wet. No, no problem. It's okay, it's okay. <laughs> Mr. Gunawan, you are an amazing driver. Thank you, <laughs> thank, thank you so much. much. Yeah. Dude, nice to meet you. Yes, thank, thank you so you. much. You. If you need a tour around Joja, or if you want to go to the temples or do anything else, this is your guy. We're gonna put his info and his WhatsApp down in the description below, so he's your guy. What a day, rainy, but so magical. Ready to go and see the town? The unfamiliarity of it all at times felt downright uncomfortable, but those fleeting moments of discomfort are exactly that, fleeting. Once you meet face to face with the kind people of Joja who proudly share and teach us about their home, once you get lost amongst thousand year old temples realizing you're the only ones there, once you get with the times, literally, and do as the locals do, going out and eating in the evening, and once you get out of your own way and realize what exists right in front of you. Yeah. All right guys. See you there. Oh, this is so cool. <laughs> Jojo's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at this. No way. Glad they're there. I thought there was, wasn't starting for a second. Didn't lose them yet. I think we're about to race. Oh. Is what it looks like. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> Later, nerds. That's when the discomfort flees, and you realize this is why we travel. This is one of those airports that just has non-stop, all the time announcements. Three, thank you. It's a little loud here.
faster, then you don't need. Uh, it's a pretty cool airport for a being tiny domestic thing. <laughs> What what are we learning in here? Oh yeah. It's so dark in here. <laughs> As a result, it's what now <sighs> I can't do math. Wait, wait, hold on, let me practice. I know you're still recording. Stop it. Please. Are you zoomed into my face? There is so much more to Indonesia than blah, blah, blah. Okay. There is so much more Indonesia than nah. Can I stand under your umbrella, Ella, Ella? Yeah, but it's technically your dad's Ella. You're supposed to say A. 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 Okay, thank you Yay. for coming. Yeah. <laughs> what is because happening? <laughs> What do you got to tell us? So many things to say.